Hey everyone, so welcome back to part 3 and this is the main functionality meaning the majority of the heavy coding stuff is going to happen here so please pay attention. Alright, so on the form Hoflex, which is basically your, um, your main form we need to create two binding lists um, one for title and one for the member objects okay and also the necessary controls given on the form okay and that's what you had to design in the previous parts okay this form appears when the user clicks the enter button on the home page or on the login screen okay it's fairly straightforward cool now in the form home flex um, load event handler okay we need to link those two binding lists that we've just created to the corresponding data grid views okay and lastly in the load event handler we need to load the saved uh, family members uh, or family member data into the family member grid or data grid view okay that is serializability or serialized um, or, um, persistence okay that I'm going to explain to you in part four in full detail so don't worry about that now um, so yeah bear with me in this part three it's gonna be long but um, yeah I want you guys to understand it cool so let's quickly jump into the code um, as you can immediately see here is um, these are my binding lists that we have created so we have binding list and we are using we are going to store member objects into this list and the list is called my family members okay and then the second list binding list we are going to store title objects and the list is going to be called my titles okay that is basically your your binding list that you've just created cool now in the form load ev uh, um, event handler we need to assign both these these binding lists to the applicable data grid views. Okay, so as you can see, the family members data grid, um, the data source of the family members data grid view is equals to the my family members list. Okay, and also as you can see, the the data source of the da uh, the title data grid view is equals to my titles, the my titles list. So everything in each list is going to be shown or is going to appear on the applicable data grid view and that's why we are doing this okay and the cool thing about binding lists is that if you set it as a data source you don't need to refresh the data grid view it automatically does it C sharp it automatically does it for you okay so you don't need to write a heavy refresh method for the data grid view after you've done something with an element in the list it automatically completes or refreshes the data grid view cool and then lastly um, we need to read data from file or, or like we need to do serializability I'm going to explain this in full detail later to you guys um, but this is basically how we are going to load all the saved family members into the applicable data grid view okay all right cool now that that is done we obviously need to add a title of a movie or a family member because you can't do anything without elements in those lists okay and then also we need to edit um, both the title and the me uh, members and we need to be able to delete either a, ti a title or a member all right so let's quickly jump into that cool so in the practical it says the buttons have the following purposes all right so this basically just says if you click on add um, add member or edit member or delete member it should load the applicable form if there is a form for example the delete both delete buttons has no it have no um, or it has no um, forms that that should load okay okay like for example the delete mem <laughs> right for example the delete member and the delete title buttons it doesn't have any um, applicable form that's loading so if you click the delete button it automatically deletes it there's no need for a form for that okay so let's quickly have uh, go to um, add title all right so in my main form if the add button add title button is clicked the following should happen all right you need to create and show the add form that the, the, that's straightforward guys all right so now the form is being loaded okay now what now all right oh and by the way guys I'm not going to um, I'm not going to show each form 
every time. So please, um, on your screen while you watch the video, please have your practical slides open so you can see the applicable form when I am in that form's code. Because every time, if I'm if I have to show you the form every time I'm in that form's code, it's gonna take a while. Okay, and nobody has time for that. <laughs> okay, cool. So that being said, um, after the form has been lo uh, loaded, created, and shown, we need to create a new title object in this form that we are going to add to our program. All right. So that is what this is about. This by now you need to understand guys. Um, I'm not rushing this practical but we we feel that you need to know these stuff by now after a practical has covered all of the all of this. Okay. So I will I will explain it but not in full detail. Okay. So here we have our data member or our our new title object. Um, or no, this is the data member here, and this is a property, and we only use the get value of that property. Okay, cool. In the title, in the add title load event handler, we are creating a new object, a title object. Okay, all right, and then straightforward after that, if you click the add button in the form add title form, okay, the form that pops up, then that object, this one, new title dot movie title dot genre dot age dot length so each data member of the title movie or of the title object is equals to what the user provided okay and then the form closes if you cl clicked the add button all right fairly straightforward guys as and also as i mentioned it was in the previous practical okay cool so now after the user has clicked the add button it closes down all right Okay, so after we've created a movie title or a movie, it should be added to the movie or my titles um, list. Okay, and that's why we are doing this. So we say my titles dot add, and then my form. All right, which is the form that we've created dot new title, because the new title is the object in that in that form like this. All right. That we access after we have added it okay and we can do that because it's public we can use that in this for um, in this way of retrieving the new title that we've just added all right so that was adding a title guys so let's quickly move over to adding a member almost exactly the same but now we only use the member um, list and objects all right, so let's quickly have a look there. So as I said, I'm not going to show you the form. Please have the form open um, when I do the code. And also, as I said, straight, fairly straightforward. There's our method um, of the form add family um, form. And now we create a new member object, okay? With the member data, uh, the data member and the property of that data member. All right, cool. So. And we are also just using the get the the get values of that property. Okay, I don't know why this is there. Please um, ignore that. Um, and in the when the form loads, the add family member form, um, a new member object is being created. Okay, and is as exactly in the add um, title form, we assign each value that the user provides to the applicable data member of the of the member object okay cool so here you can see family member name age and now number of watched movies um is is that okay cool so that was adding a title and a family member so let's quickly move to editing and deleting but first let's let's quickly do edit all right so sorry guys um, this can get very messy and very uh, confusing but please try and stick with me um, and as I said keep your forms open next to you all right because I'm not going to show that to you each time all right so let's quickly go to the edit title form Here you can see there's a bit more a bit a few stuff that's different um, although the method of the form is also exactly the same or no no not the method the constructor 
this is the forms constructor all right here we have the data member and the property of a new title object and now since we are editing you can already see we are using the get and the set values all right because we are getting whatever is stored and we are setting whatever new values we want for that user all right now in the load event handler of this form we need to actually um this is our okay let's let's quickly go back to to this so the button edit title um event handler um, we try and catch something first okay cool because we can't edit something if there's nothing to edit all right so try this first if there's nothing there are no movies to edit okay so now very very important we need to get the index of the row meaning which row we are currently working in okay after that we need to create and show the edit for um, edit title form okay and now my form dot edited title which is the object that we've created in that form is equals to whatever I selected in my data grid view okay but it is as the index in my titles list all right so we need to go and see oh, okay cool the index what I selected is what is th that is the applicable element in my list and all of this is equals to what I or what I'm working with in the form that is loading. All right. And then obviously the form loads. <laughs> okay, cool. So let's quickly go to um, the edit title uh, form. All right. Cool. So the forms constructor, again, straightforward. Here we are creating a new title data member. And a property um, that is um, um, according to the data member. All right, um, but it's also its title objects. Okay, so and as you also can see, we are using the get and the set values because we are retrieving or getting the values that has been um, that have been edited or, or saved previously. And set because we need to update or we, we have to update or change values and for that we are setting new values okay all right cool so now you can see great um, in the load event handler everything if 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 the, if the form loads then the, the the applicable fields the title the genre the age restriction and the length of that movie that we've selected in the data grid view should be populated with that member that we've selected in the data grid views applicable data members okay and that's why we say txt title dot text is equals to edit the title dot movie title and so forth dot genre dot age restriction dot length okay so we need whatever we've selected in the data grid view should show in the form that loads okay and this is what is being done okay and also if you go back that is this bit that I have explained to you. Okay, so whatever um, item or or member or, or or entry or cell that I've created or selected in the data grid view is equals to the edited title, or the ti edited title is equals to whatever I've selected. Okay, and that is why I can do this. Okay, cool. Now if I've the the need of updating or changing any value um, on that form then this bit of code applies okay so now we say edit a title dot movie title is equals to the txt title dot text and so forth txt genre dot text is equal to the genre data me um, member and so forth and so forth okay so here you actually assign new values to the editor title object or, or to the title object okay here you can see you are retrieving what has been already saved into that edit or, or title object so that is equals to the previous edit object um, value of title genre age restriction and length okay but here we are setting or giving new values 
to that object data values or data members okay and then after that's been successful we close the form and then after the form has been closed then the the element in the titles or my titles list is equals to what we have changed in the in the form just now to the editor title object okay so we basically we are replacing the selected row with the changed title object as this comment says to you guys here all right and that is basically it that is how you edit a title of a movie all right okay so i already went over the catch um so let's quickly move to the edit member guys this is exactly the same okay so everything that i've just explained to you here now applies to the edit member you just literally need to to maybe change that to from from editor title to edited member and you need to change my titles list because you're replacing the list mem um, um, element okay to my family members and then also change that and that is basically it because you also need to create or get the the new um, or, or the row index meaning you need to get the um, the applicable row that you are working with all right and if you get that then you can use it to actually identify which which element in the list you are working with and which you are replacing or editing okay so um, this is exactly the same um, also you can see it's in a try catch so let's quickly quickly just go to the edit member um, form so I can just let, let's just quickly go over it um, so the forms constructor says the same there's no um, parameters because we're not passing anything through that way then we need to create um, a private member uh, of the name m edited member um, and the public member edited member okay cool and you can also see we are using get set exactly the same as the edit title form um, because we are retrieving what it was saved earlier and if we want to update it we need to set or, or provide new values okay and that's why we need to have a get and set also as I explained previously we have our load event handler the item is that we have selected okay those details all right so the form my form dot edited member is equals to that element in the list okay meaning what we have selected in the data grid view and that data grid view is linked remember now the data grid view is linked to a list as a data source okay so whatever row you select you select you basically select an object okay so if you link that list to the data grid view and you go and say that then basically my family members um, is the element of that is equals to my edited member object okay all right cool so i hope you understand that um so yeah all right where was i now i wanted to say that to you okay so you select your 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 cell meaning your object as i just explained and now you can actually assign or present whatever that family member was and you can populate each field in the form that loads okay because we've you've just selected in the data grid view now you just want to see oh, okay cool um the 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 name the f um, family name family name the first name the age and the number of movies watched uh txt nums watched um is equals to the applicable um edited member data member okay all right meaning family name name age and number watched okay cool now if you have the urge as i also explained earlier if you have the urge on of updating let's say a family member um married and their surname changed okay then you need to update it so in order to do that you need to go and assign the new values to each data member as you can see there um applicable to uh, like family name is is the txt family dot um dot text uh, property and then so forth all right so then now you assign new values to the the member object okay and now you close the form 
and we go back to the main form. So now we need to update the, the family members list because what's the use if you update it but it's not saving it or, or, or storing it, you know? So now we say my family members and that is what I've selected, all right? So my row, okay, is equals to the new values that I've passed through here, all right? Is equals to the new values, okay? So we've basically updated the the family members list the family members binding list okay so that was editing a member all right guys now we move over to delete which is the most easiest thing i think in this program <laughs> except for creating the lists all right cool so let's quickly jump into that so as i previously explained you need to select or or get the actual row that you are working with right in order to do that, we say int I select index is equals to DGV titles current cell row index, meaning we get the index of the row so we know what row we are working with. Okay, now we say um, my titles, which is the name of my list, and we want to remove what I've selected. Okay, so my titles dot remove at and then the selected index which is the row that you are currently selected or where you click a cell in that row and we want to delete that and that is it so you remove whatever you've so okay so we remove whatever you have selected in this list cool and that's delete all right and also there's a try catch guys be quick because if the data grid view is empty um and you want and you keep on clicking the delete button uh, C sharps can just tell you um, there no reference to an object or there's no or you went out of the range or something like that okay and to avoid that error we do a try catch okay there are no movies left to delete all right cool stuff delete family member guys it's exactly the same I'm not going to repeat that let's save time so yeah it's exactly the same except you want to delete from the family members list and not the my titles list okay cool exactly the same thing all right cool stuff right guys let's quickly do the watch movie button okay so as you can see we have a lot to do so let's quickly jump into it so we first need to check if both data grid views are empty or not. If they are, uh, give this message box. Error, blah, blah, blah. All right. If it isn't, then continue doing all of this. Okay. So first things first, we need to get the in row indexes. Okay. And to do that by now, I think you know how to, but I'll quickly go over it. So we say in title index because we need the index of the title data grid view and the index of the member data grid view, family member data grid view. Okay, so we get the row index of both of those. Great, that's done. Now we need to get the age because later on we need to pass through age as a parameter in the can watch method in your title class. Okay, so in order to do that, you say int member age is equals to my family members, the list, and that element that you've selected in your data grid view okay we want to work with that element in the list and we want need to get the age of that action or of that person in the list okay so now we have age now we actually want to test okay so we got the age of the member now but can he actually watch the movie that he or she wants to watch okay so now we go and say my titles which is the list and we get whatever movie he or she wants to to watch we say dot can watch okay because it's the the title method and we then we send through whatever age we got okay member age and then if it's if age is less than that do this then the user may watch it he or she is at an applicable age to watch that movie all right so we need now we need to do the following we need to increment the number watched data member of whatever person is selected in the my family list okay and that's it that is incrementing the number watched okay now 
we refresh the data grid view because we are we have literally just changed the number watched data member so we need to in this case we need to refresh it and then you say um, you get, provide a message box and you say um, my family members okay in the list um, whatever you selected dot name okay so you've selected a person that name will appear well now watch my titles the list okay whatever you selected dot movie title okay all right and that is what you need to show the user after you've clicked the button okay but we're not done yet there's still one more if statement so we need now to check um, if the user is addicted okay so if now if he can watch it now every time it increments remember but now if it becomes 10 or more times that that person has watched the movie now we actually need to check if he or she is an addict okay so now we go to my family members because we're working with a family member and we have selected a specific family member from that list okay because we're working with the row index here dot home flicks addict okay so let's quickly go to member here where we have home flicks addict okay so if this is true if he is an addict okay return true so if it's true show that beware whatever family member in the family members list i've selected in the data grid view the name of that member so we, we say beware the name for example i'm johan and i've selected myself in the data grid view so beware johan may be addicted to home flicks okay if i have incremented my number watched count to 10 or more okay then that statement that's boolean value or method is true then i send that through and nothing else the thing that i need to to supply or provide to the user and that is the only thing that i need to send through in this if statement okay all right so this was in case as i previously maybe i, I think I, I explained it to you so this is if the age restriction is allowed so if i'm young enough to watch a movie so let's example for example the the age restriction is 16 and i am um and i am 18 years old um then i can watch it but if i'm if if i'm 15 and i want to watch a movie that's 16 then this will appear um whatever family member i've selected is too young to watch the applicable title that was also selected in the other day to grid view okay and that is what is being done in the in the watch movie button okay so this is where um, it, it's a good example of how you can use methods in your class and how you can manipulate the titles or, or the lists where you access a list and then get a specific data member of a, uh, a select element of a list and then send that through as a parameter like age that like we have done with age and then also seeing if a boolean method is true or false doing what what you need to do if that's not true what else you should do okay and this was the the actual purpose of this this big um, um, piece of code here okay so um, yeah that was watch button movie um, exit tool menu strip this dot close if if you want to close the form all right that's straightforward okay